today I'm going to talk to you about uh, supply chain management. Uh, supply chain is a necessity these days because of the competitiveness, competitiveness in the marketplace. Why competitiveness? So there are so many production units for the same single product and uh, they are all specialized location wise, distribution wise and uh, uh, competitiveness in, turn, uh, in terms of price wise. So uh, definitely uh, a firm wants to compete in the marketplace in a more efficient way. It has to be in coordination with the other partners in the uh, chain. Uh, so other partners in the supply chain. So supply chain uh, has different partners. It starts with suppliers, then the manufacturers or the uh, uh, producers. Then it is uh, once they produce the uh, product, they it goes to the retailer or uh, the distributor. Then from the distributor to the retailer, uh, then retailer to the consumer. So it takes. Uh, so, uh, supply chain management is a case where the conduit of movement of uh, the a produce or a service, product or a service from the supplier of raw material till the it goes via uh, these chains, uh, partners, chain partners to reach the customer. So, when uh, we talk about why do we need uh, supply chains, as I told you the competitiveness in the marketplace. Uh, necessitates the uh, sub operations of the supply chain. Earlier, uh, uh, let me get into the small history of uh, supply chain. Uh, earlier, uh, the industries were focused on few locations uh, with few products in line and few markets in focus. But these days, the companies have diversified in terms of, I mean, there is a geographical uh, diversification, uh, there is a product diversification and there is a service diversification and uh, this in turn say uh, this is the kind I mean uh, uh, one scenario where uh, the production goes. The other scenario is the consumption side where the consumers are almost distributed throughout the world with improving incomes, improving standards of living, the consumption is, uh, is on the upscale uh, mainly in the developing countries and the industries have been located in the developed countries those days and they have started diversifying into the uh, de developing countries and uh, to meet the local consumption needs. So the product has to move through a, a long chain cut cutting across many number of partners. So supply chain management we essentially mean here to manage the product flow and the product flow, the information flow and the money flow, say the product flow and the information, product flow happens one way from the supplier to the consumer. The uh, information flow happens both ways, uh, say uh, for example, a feedback is being given by the consumer will come to the uh, um, distributor, retailer, manufacturer and in turn it goes to the uh, supplier of the raw materials. So this is, uh, this is one way of flow of information. The other way of flow of information is say for example, uh, warranty is being given to the product, a warranty or a, a guarantee for a product or a service. So it should flow from the supplier till the uh, consumer. So information flows back and forth, the product flows from the supplier to the uh, consumer and uh, the money flows. Money flows, uh, for example, uh, the producer, the supplier, in fact, uh, he starts investing in his supplies to the manufacturer. Manufacturer in turn uh, uses the uh, raw materials to convert them into the, uh, into the product or a service and he invests money in, uh, in the processes. So at each point in the chain, there is an investment happening. So there is a flow of money there is a, a concentrated investment at each part, uh, partner level and there is a flow of money from uh, uh, supplier till the uh, uh, consumer uh, uh, is met, uh, I mean the demands of the consumer is met with. So this is one way of flow, the working capital flow that is what we call. Then the other side, uh, the uh, uh, customers, the customer pays in the marketplace, pays for the product that he is uh, acquiring or uh, getting maybe it is a service or a product. So he pays the money for the product and it flows th back through to the till the 
supplier end. So, these are the flows that happen in the supply chain. So, supply chain management means here say we want to optimize uh, make it more make the flows more efficient uh, so that cost is cut at each partner level. So, that the processes become cost efficient and and in turn it would reflect in the price of the product or a service that uh, the particular chain offers. Uh, that is one uh, way of looking at uh, the supply chain flows. The other uh, issue here is the responsiveness, the speed with which a, a retailer or a distributor responds to the needs of the customer or requirements of the customer at a particular point of time. So, maybe it is in terms of price, in terms of uh, quality, in terms of uh, the delivery schedules, etcetera, etcetera. So, uh, these issues have become very, very important because of uh, the uh, uh, existence of uh, many, many uh, uh, manufacturing firms that compete with each other, right. Uh, let us get into the advantages of uh, such a manage, I mean such management of the partners of the supply chain in a line. So, uh, we try to economize for example, say when the product is to be moved from the factory to the uh, say for example, the warehouse there is a transportation. We need to minimize the transportation distance, distribution distance right. By the way, we are saving some money. So, the savings in money will get in in terms of uh, uh, reflected in terms of the price as well as the profit that could be shared among uh, the uh, partners in the chain. Then say uh, usually in a supply chain there is a, a, a leader, a leader who has invested more money into the processes and he dictates the other partners to fall in line with him. And uh, the role of the leader here would be to disseminate the flow of information and also share the uh, profits that he gets in tune with the contribution of each of the partners, right. And uh, uh, over a period of time, uh, the leader in the chain uh, uh, invests more on technology because he has to in fact compete enormously with the uh, other uh, uh, competitors in the marketplace. So, uh, technology improves, uh, so uh, tracking and tracing to the source. This is another issue because say for example, in uh, especially in the food products, uh, this tracking and uh, tracing uh, uh, issue gets I mean uh, high importance in the uh, European and uh, American markets where they want to really understand if something goes wrong with the product at the marketplace or with the, the customer level, they really want to trace where such problem has occurred in the chain and this in turn helps uh, the building up of the uh, building up of the image for the company and brand as such in one way and the other way to find out what has gone wrong and where and how it could be corrected through the chain. And uh, this tracing and, uh, and also the customer in turn he wants to know about uh, the uh, details of the product. For example, I have uh, seen a website um, in, uh, uh, that was hosted from Netherlands which uh, say if you go to a butcher shop you buy a piece of meat you want to look at how the the cow looked like before it was butchered, you could go to the everything is recorded from the birth of the calf till it was slaughtered. Everything is recorded, the feeding ratio is recorded and the uh, final parameters before butchering is all recorded. So, if you as a consumer, if you want to look at all these aspects, you can. So, that is how uh, the kind of information flow helps the uh, people in making decisions. So, tracing and tracking is one of the very important issues in terms of safety of the product and in terms of satisfying the customer's requirements. Then, uh, so uh, naturally if such things have to happen, some uh, say a leader in the chain has to invest more. Uh, so, uh, as I told you, uh, the partners of the supply chain, I mean uh, the major partners are, it always starts with the suppliers. So, suppliers are the people who supply the raw materials for the processing, uh, then the second partner would be the manufacturer and once the manufacturer manufactures the product or a service, it, he passes it on to the wholesaler or distributor and from where it goes to the retailer and ultimately to the uh, uh, customers or consumers or whatever it is. So, there are uh, usually uh, two ways in which the whole supply chain is looked at, uh, the cycle view and the 
uh, push or pull view. Cycle view uh, as I have been explaining, cycle view in turn explains how the product flows from one uh, part of the cycle to the other cycle. For example, the supplier, supplier supplies the raw material to the manufacturer, supplier to the uh, supplier then, so supplier has to source the raw, raw material or he has to uh, say process the raw materials to be further processed by the manufacturer. So, those are the activities that are taken up at the supplier level. So, he has to pass on whatever he has uh, uh, I mean prepared in terms of raw material to the to the manufacturer. So, manufacturer in turn uh, he transforms the uh, supplies that is raw materials into a product or a service. So, there are cycles within each partners that are happening and that is connected to the next partner in line. So, that is what is a cycle view and push and pull view uh, say uh, push view say uh, the manufacturers uh, they keep on producing and they store it in their warehouses and they look at the market to push their products to the customers pushing. They do not uh, uh, measure uh, really what is actually uh, the demand would be in a particular market based on the heuristic knowledge or uh, based on the uh, uh, past uh, uh, experience they know how much to produce. There is a problem with this uh, push kind of a uh, view. Uh, th there is another view pull view. So, pull view gets triggered say when the customer places an order the chain starts reacting. Say customer places an order to the uh, retailer then retailer passes on the order to the uh, uh, um, distributor, distributor in turn to the manufacturer and manufacturer in turn to the it, it flows backwards. So, so the customer uh, demand or customer requirement pulls the whole chain to act. So, this is what is uh, the uh, push or pull uh, 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 cycle. So, let me get into the drivers of supply chain performance. So, we need to say I have told you what is supply chain management, supply chain management looks at efficiency and responsiveness. So, performance is usually measured in terms of efficiency and uh, the responsiveness to for a supply chain to be efficient. So, these are the drivers that have to be concentrated upon and any corrective measures or any adjustments have to be made here. So, these are the four drivers, these are the four drivers inventory uh, inventory, transportation, facility and information. So, forecasting in a su supply chain. So, I have been talking to you about uh, the push and pull processes. In both the processes forecasting is important. Forecasting is nothing but trying to predict the future using the past information, right. So, uh, forecasting say usually the long term forecasts are less accurate than a short term forecast and that is uh, the aggregated uh, forecast for the aggregated uh, materials would be better than uh, uh, non aggregated disaggregated uh, forecast. There are two types of uh, uh, methods through which uh, forecasting is done uh, qualitative and quantitative. Uh, qualitative is basically uh, it is a kind of uh, the a forecast that is made based on the past uh, experience, past understanding of a particular event, particular demand or a supply of a particular product in a particular market. Mm, whereas, quantitative relies more on the past information that have been documented in terms of some data uh, and uh, we can uh, always uh, do some uh, statistical analysis of the past uh, data and try to predict the future that is what is a quantitative uh, uh, forecasting. Uh, so, this forecasting is required to estimate the demand in the marketplace from the customers either through the push process or the pull process or uh, the uh, um, push process pull processes or uh, the uh, uh, other uh, uh, views. Uh, distribution is another important aspect in the supply chain because distribution takes away about 30 percent of the total cost of the supply chain, uh, cost of the supply chain. So, it is a kind of moving the products from one place to the other and uh, so distribution also takes into account the facilities that are being located in different uh, places. So, there are different methodologies to locate the facilities. Facilities are nothing but 
the infrastructure for example, a distribution infrastructure or a storage infrastructure or a transportation infrastructure. So, uh, these are the uh, facilities, these are called facilities. They have to be strategically located to attain the uh, objective of minimizing the cost and uh, maximizing the responsiveness of the, uh, uh, of the demand. Purchasing and inventory management is another area where uh, the whole supply chain management uh, performance and the efficiency bounce on. Uh, like uh, say purchasing is nothing but procuring materials, raw materials and uh, that is I mean that itself is a big subject purchase management. But when uh, you consider supply chains, uh, the purchase policies and purchase strategies of a company that I mean it, it uh, relies, uh, it affects to a large extent the profits that are made by the company or the responsiveness of the company in meeting the customer's demand. So, th th there is a purchasing cycle say uh, purchasing does not happen automatically, purchasing has to have different series of steps that will look into the processes in detail and try to look at and concentrate on the efficiency part of the whole uh, chain. And uh, there, is a, there are 8 hours of uh, purchase parameters all rights, there are no wrongs here only rights, right quality, quantity, price, time, right source, right time of delivery, place of delivery, adopting right procedures uh, using right contractual methods. And there can be different types of purchasing. So, purchasing again I, I stress on purchasing because 20 percent of the total cost of the product. Uh, depends on the uh, purchasing processes. So, uh, there are different types of purchasing, contract purchasing, blanket purchasing, uh, tender purchasing, seasonal purchasing, subcontracting, group purchasing, etc. E-purchasing is the latest uh, one that is being relied globally to source out the materials. So, inventory management, uh, uh, so once a purchase is made, the inventory has to be managed. The whole process is based on how you plan for the market, whether it is a push process as a, or a pull process, both these processes rely on a production planning platform, where they try to predict based on some forecasting tools, they try to predict how much is to be produced and how much is to be transported, how much is to be stored in the uh, warehouses. So, these are the three uh, issues that critically uh, affects the management of the inventory. Inventories can be uh, say raw material inventory, work in process inventory or a finished good uh, inventory. Uh, so, so, these inventories as I told you purchasing is one process and we need to uh, find out uh, one of the R's is the right source. We need to find out who supplies what material at what cost at what uh, 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 price. So, we need to have scoring assessment of the suppliers. There may be a lot of suppliers. For example, if a car, car has for example, say 10,000 different spares. So, all these 10,000 spares cannot be produced by a single say for example, a Maruti uh, uh, company. So, they have to rely on uh, for a sing, uh, for the say for example, there are uh, say 5,000, 5,000, 6,000 spares that, has been, that are being brought from the market, brought from the market. For each spare, they might rely on 10 to 20 suppliers. And so, suppliers would be geographically uh, differentiated, product wise they might be differentiated, price wise they might be differentiated, quality wise, uh, supplier scheduling wise, the flexibility wise, etcetera, etcetera. So, one has to be, I mean uh, the suppliers have to be continuously assessed for their performance to make the whole purchasing process uh, a more efficient one. So, an, an another area in supply chain management is the warehouse. The warehouse is a commercial building or a premise that, that is designed for uh, st bulk storage of uh, either raw materials or uh, the finished uh, products. So, we need warehouses because uh, uh, warehouses is a part of facility that I was talking about earlier which drives the which drives the total uh, supply chain performance and supply chain management principles. Uh, we need warehouses uh, to store the perishables, food grains and to meet the unseasonal demand. Unseasonal, usually the agricultural for products for example, they are produced very seasonally. They need to be stored, they need to be stored and made available to the consumers or for the processing manufacturers uh, throughout the year. 
so that uh, say the uh, demand from the customers are met at the same time price wise a uh, good uh, uh, profit is made by the partners. So, there are different types of warehouses private public bonded private is owned by the private uh, investments and uh, public is owned by the government and uh, the bonded is usually owned by the uh, government located near the airports and uh, the uh, uh, seaports. So, we need to have a good warehousing practices there are GWP we call that good warehousing practices to keep the uh, materials that are stored inside uh, the warehouses very safe and ready to be delivered at any point of time that is in uh, that is in demand. So, transportation is another area where uh, uh, the supply chain uh, management usually concentrates upon to make the processes uh, efficient. So, transportation helps us to move the product from one place to the other place as I have been mentioning earlier. So, these days production takes place say for example, uh, uh, throughout uh, the world and the consumption also happens to be throughout the world. So, necessarily the production and consumption centers have to be have to be bridged upon or networked. So, the both these centers are uh, can be in, uh, termed as facilities and uh, that is one important driver of the uh, supply chain management. So, uh, there are different factors that affect the transportation decisions. The carrier, carrier means the way the uh, mode through which we try to transport the uh, materials or the uh, products final products. So, we need to uh, look at the cars fixed, uh, fixed operating cars, trip related cars, quantity related cars, qu quantity related cars and overhead cars. In, in terms of shipper who ships the product from one place to the other, he would always look into the transportation cost and that is one reason for which say you might have uh, uh, you might be knowing uh, many of the car companies that intend to export their cars they are usually located on the uh, um, on the coastal areas um, coastal areas and nearer to the uh, ships uh, ship ports I mean uh, ports sea ports. Mm. The uh, shipper would always look at the cost of uh, moving, moving his produce to different markets, then inventory uh, how much he would uh, uh, transport, uh, what would be the cost of uh, the facility ship uh, I mean shipping facility itself, the processing cost and service level cost. And there can be different ways of transportation airways, roadways, railways, waterways and pipeline. Pipeline is usually used for the transporting the gas. So, uh, I, friends I have talked about the important uh, drivers of supply chain management. So, these are the forces that drive the supply chain management. The objective of the supply chain management is to strike a balance between responsiveness and efficiency as we discussed. So, certain products are uh, to be delivered in a very quick way compromising uh, the cost the efficiency. For example, uh, say uh, one can always send a courier courier post through for example, uh, the FedEx or the local couriers. So, when you choose uh, the local courier it might take lot of time for example, if you are uh, sending a post from here to Canada it would take say 6 or 7 days a local courier. If you are going to choose FedEx it the delivery would be assured in 2 days and one can track and trace where his post is. So, and you need to pay a very high uh, check for uh, sending your product through uh, say for example, the FedEx. So, that is a, a kind of uh, balance that one needs to look at depending upon the importance, the value of the product, importance of the product, the importance of the product to the customer and uh, the time at which it is required. So, these are the uh, drivers which in turn drive the whole supply chain to be more efficient or more uh, responsive. So, that is to be decided by uh, th that should be a balanced uh, kind of uh, a process. So, I mean talking about uh, these important drivers and uh, the recent uh, development is e supply chain management where uh, the supply chain management happens through the internet intranet virtual private networks. So, uh, uh, the Dell is the classic example of uh, the e uh, supply chain management. Dell has say 6 or 7 hubs throughout the world uh, assembly hubs. One as such assembly hub is in Singapore 
right. So they do not in turn produce anything, they just assemble their suppliers from different parts of the world, right. They assemble the product and supply to the nearby markets. For example, if a person from uh, India places an order over the internet for a laptop, it reaches the uh, hub of uh, Dell at Singapore. The it is a kind of a pull process. The whole chain is triggered. Then uh, the uh, product is finally supplied to the customer by the Dell hub from Singapore. So the process is fast, and the customer has a choice. He can always. Uh, there is a kind of a flexibility built into it, you can always try to oh, do some uh, changes in the configurations you want in the laptop. So these are the facilities that are uh, uh, I mean entwined with uh, e-supply chain uh, management. So when we look at uh, e-supply chain management, it can be internal as well as external. Internal supply chains, I mean say if a manufacturer he looks at uh, internally what is to be done. So he looks at uh, the different aspects and tries to improve the processes right As that is internal. Customer relationship management is one where uh, customers are, are uh, focused for uh, better relationship over a period of time for uh, improving their market uh, potential. I have tried to explain you the in nutshell I have tried to explain you the importance of supply chain management and what drives the supply chain management. Uh, so you need to uh, go through, I mean uh, this is a subject which cannot be discussed in a short time. So you need to go through the managed website or uh, uh, books I mean uh, like Peter Meindel on supply chain management to understand it in a better way. Thank you.